Hey guys, it's Bridgette with Sandy Seed Company and we're here in the garden. It is April, it is beautiful. And a lot of you, beginning gardeners especially, are probably wondering, what are you gonna be planting right now? Well, I'm gonna jump into that in this video. I'm gonna talk specifically about what you wanna be planting in April in zone nine and 10. So I have my handy dandy chalkboard here to help me remember all of the things that we're gonna be planting. And keep in mind, this is not exhaustive. I also have my calendar to help me because April, there's so many things that you can plant in zone nine and 10. I mean, in our climate, you can plant year round and there's a lot of crops to plant every single month, but April and May in particular, whew, the list is really long because the hours of sunlight are getting longer, the temperatures are getting warmer. If you're in zone eight, you're probably past your, your last freeze. And for the colder areas of zone nine and 10, we're definitely warming up. So let's jump into all of the stuff you can plant. And I want you to remember some of these key patterns that you're gonna see during this time of year in the spring, especially if you're a new gardener and you're transplant maybe from a different part of the United States. Okay, so in April, I've got listed right here, warmer average temperatures. And now that I'm looking at it, I hope I spelled that all right. But look, it takes a very small mind to only spell a word one way. So, Warmer average temperatures right now is key to the happiness and the growth of a lot of your crops. I've seen it across social media where people are posting photos of their garden and saying like nothing is growing, everything's been growing really slowly. Well, it's because we've been cold, we've been wet, and the hours of sunlight are still relatively short. Well, that is really changing and rapidly as spring temperatures come. So warmer average temperatures both in the air and in the soil means that it's easier for you to direct sow a lot of crops. So things like your beans, your corn, your cucumbers, your melons, your squash, and your pumpkins. As the soil is warmer, that means that the germination process is gonna happen a lot quicker and it's gonna make direct seeding a lot easier. Because they germinate quicker, it's easier to get them growing and to, to protect them from all the little insects that come and want to chew them down. And it's also awesome because you go outside and in a couple days, maybe some squash that you planted is already germinated and popping up through the soil. So warmer average temperatures. If you're a brand new gardener or even just like a novice gardener, always kind of remember that what makes spring so magical is the ambient air temperature is warmer and the soil is warmer, which means everything grows a little bit faster. Bridget, can you spell pumpkins for me? Yeah, it's P-U-M-P-K-I-N-S. Okay, and how do you say it? Pumpkins. Pumpkins, you said it right. Because <laughs> you made me spell it, but it should be pumpkins. P-U-N-K-I-N-S. Yeah, pumpkins. That's the new way to spell it. Pumpkins. Okay. 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 All right, moving on. Anyway, so those are things that you want to direct sow. And now keep in mind, things that I'm mentioning are general rules, and I always encourage people to break the rules. In fact, we actually start our cucumbers in starter packs a lot of time because it's easier to get them up and growing in our warm weather that way versus direct sowing. But these are traditionally direct sown crops. They're big seed, they're easy to germinate in moist, warm soil. And um, you know, the nice thing about direct sowing these is it's kind of a quick and easy process versus starting them in seed. Trays. Okay, so we talked about direct sowing. Now, we also this time of year, because we're really in the full swing of spring, that's a tongue twister, you can either transplant out plants that are ready to go into the ground, and you can also be seed starting. And I really want to just let you put your mind at ease. We get so many messages where people say, I'm late, I'm late, I'm late. It's like the little rabbit in, uh, what's that movie? Alice in Wonderland, where he's like, I'm late, I'm late, I'm late. It's zone nine and 10, you're fine. You have plenty of time to start your seeds for the first time or succession plant. So like we have peppers here. Now this is our first round of peppers, but we'll do more rounds of peppers. These are actually ready to plant into the ground. So you, you can either buy transplants if you want and plant them out. You can start your seeds now, you have plenty of time. And that's particularly what I'm talking about Eggplant, peppers, and tomatoes. And then here's a good example. I've got some tomatoes here. I need to put these in the ground. These were started a little bit earlier, but I also have tomatoes that are already in the ground and I'm gonna start more. 
That's what's collectively known as succession planting. So for those of you who love tomato plants and want to start tomato seeds all summer long, in zone nine and 10, you can actually start your tomato seeds well into late summer because especially cherry type tomatoes can actually perennialize and grow all the way through the warm fall months and winter months in zone nine and 10. But do keep in mind when you do that, you're taking space for your fall crops. And we have tons of videos on fall crops, which you typically start well, in the fall, as, as their name suggests. The point of me mentioning that is you got plenty of time. Don't rush, enjoy the garden. Everything's happening so quick right now. We're in the thick of it too. It's spring, we're planting all our crops on our farm. Everything's so busy, but take time to stop and smell the roses, which we don't have. So smell the tomatoes because it's spring and it's beautiful right now. So eggplant, peppers, tomatoes, either transplant the plants out if you already have them started or you wanna go buy transplants or start them from seed. So we talked about vegetables. Now please do not forget about the flowers. Everything is blooming right now. There's wildflowers galore. You go to the desert and it looks amazing. California poppies are going crazy. And your garden should be flowering as well but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't think about starting more flowers. So when you take a look around, you can see we have so many blooms, but I don't stop there. I continue to start seeds of a lot of very easy and fun to grow flowers so that I have them ready to replant all throughout the spring and summer months. Things that are really fun and easy to grow, things like amaranth, beautiful, easy to grow flower, grain actually, it's also edible, borage, calendula, our dahlia, which is planted by bulbs or, or um, actually clumps of tubers, those can get planted now. Foxglove, gallardia, the list goes on and on. If you are a new flower grower in zone nine and 10, or even if you're just a, a gardener that's not really well acquainted with all the flowers that can grow in nine and 10, make sure you check out our calendar. We have a full list of all the beautiful flowers that you can grow throughout the year. And what makes it so amazing is you can be growing 365 days a year and have blooms all year long in zone nine and 10. That's why we pay so much money to live here because it's beautiful. So don't forget to start tons of flowers. It's good for your garden, for the pollinators to come. You need the bees to visit your beautiful calendula flowers and then they'll hop right over to your squash which needs pollinating. So plant for the pollinators, plant for you and also for your cut garden so you can cut beautiful flowers and bring them inside and also share them with your neighbors.